Well, good morning, everyone. It's great to see the few people who were able to make it today. It's great to have you here uh, in person, present. Uh, but it's also good to welcome all of the folks that we have online. As you can imagine, we're still in the middle of a COVID pandemic. I think that last year, we had this event on the balcony outside my office. It was a nice sunny day. When we scheduled this, we weren't sure if we would have sun, and we thought that we may end up in a TV studio. Uh, and so we didn't really anticipate a whole lot of people being able to come. But at the last minute, we were able to secure this room uh, on the seventh floor here in the Health Professions Education Building. And it's great to be able to have at least a few folks with us today. So welcome. It's good to see you. And for those of you who are online, welcome as well. This is the fall academic convocation for the University of Pikeville. And we're very happy to be able to come to you today virtually and also a little bit in person. To begin with, my name is Burton Webb. I'm the president here. We have been doing these academic convocations for many years. Uh, I don't have a record of exactly how many, but I'm pretty confident that it's over several decades. And so it's great to be able to gather once at the beginning of each year and to celebrate an individual who has contributed greatly to the service of the region, but also to the life of the mind and to the ways in which we can come together and think and work and develop our understanding of problems that exist in our society and our community and how we might better serve one another. Um, I would like to begin by inviting our chaplain, Robert Music, to come to the podium and to deliver the invocation. He will be followed uh, by Dr. Worth, the university provost. Rob? It's a great day. Thanks, Tammy, for your service and being with us today. Let's take a moment and pray. God of great mercy and kindness, today as we celebrate the start of this fall semester, we're mindful of the impact of COVID on our university, our state, our nation, our world. Today we lift up all the healthcare providers, researchers, administrators, supporting those who are sick and fearful from this plague. Please bring an end to this terrible virus and provide us not only with physical healing, but also emotional and mental healing from the wounds this has caused. Please hold close those who are grieving the loss of loved ones today. Also, as the rains have battered our nation, we know that many of our neighbors, friends, and students have been impacted by flooding. As they now begin to clean up and dry out, we ask that you would provide for all of their needs and you meet them with the resources and items that are needed to start again. Help us to see and respond with love. Also, as our world is changing, we're mindful of the women, minorities, and refugees in Afghanistan. As this nation is in the midst of devastating changes, we ask for peace in this war-torn land. Would you allow education and freedom to be an option for all people? And yet, here we are launching into another academic year. We ask your blessing on our students as they learn and lean into the challenges of academic and athletic realities. Give them deep levels of determination and passion to complete all the necessary, necessary tasks with great excellence. Would you guide our administrators, our professors, our staff, and support personnel as they seek to balance their personal health, their hard work, their families, and the demands of supporting students? Oh God, this year, may you feel a deep level of creativity, integrity, and mission for our campus community that will have a tremendous impact on our world. Allow us to be your hands and feet for those who are in need. From our labs to the gym to concert halls, may we be a light of your peace and compassion. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our fall convocation. This morning, I have the privilege of introducing our convocation speaker for this fall, Tammy Riley. As public health director for the Pike County Health Department, Tammy Riley serves as a diverse community health advocate and skilled allied health professional experienced in developing hospital and agency partnerships. With a strong public relations background, Riley promotes community health across private, public, and governmental sectors, providing a variety of public health services to the community served by the department as an appointed authority. 
She serves in a variety of tasks, which include planning and financial management, as well as assessing and analyzing the health status of our county. She has a close working relationship with state agencies, provides technical assistance and support, incorporating core public health functions and essential public health services for the agency. As a native of Pike County, Tammy is a 1992 graduate of University of Pikeville, then Pikeville College. She earned a Master's of Arts degree in education from Moorhead State University and worked in medical sales for over 10 years before becoming the campus director and senior administrator for Pikeville and Bristol campuses, American National University. She received the Distinguished Service Award in 2010, was selected the campus director in 2013, and oversaw several program degrees, including nursing, paramedic, and medical technician. Prior to entering public health, Tammy took personal interest in local politics, serving as an officer for Pike County Democratic Women's Club. In addition, she was manager and treasurer for two countywide political races. She serves on multiple boards, the Kiwanis Club, a board member and chair of Education Committee for Southwest Kentucky Chamber of Commerce, the Appalachian Scholar House, and has served for Southeast Kentucky Chamber of Commerce. She's currently on the board of the Big Sandy Diabetes Coalition, East Kentucky representative of the East Health Directors Association and Executive Committee. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome the fall convocation speaker, Tammy Riley. Thank you, Provost. Thank you, Mr. President, University of Pikeville family, distinguished guests, and thank you to the University of Pikeville graduating class of 2025. It is certainly my honor to be with you this morning, albeit virtually, as you begin the journey to continue your education. Now, I know you must be excited, just as I'm sure many of you are probably a little nervous as well concerned about the next four years and your future success. Let me assure you, there is nothing wrong with being a little nervous. Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, 24th president of Liberia and Africa's first female president, she once said, if you don't dream, if your dreams don't scare you, you're not dreaming big enough. If nothing else, being nervous proves your dreams are big. You've made the right decision, and you should all be proud of yourselves. The anxiety, the nervousness you feel this morning means only that your dreams are big, as they should be. And trust me, you are where you're supposed to be. Were we in person? I would ask that you just take a look at the student in the seat beside you. Not long ago, I was that student in the seat, unsure if I'd made the right decision, anxious about whether or not I would succeed. If you are a first-generation college student, I would not not have been the student sitting beside you. I would have been sitting in your seat because I was a first-generation college student, what was then Pikeville College. So the anxiety you feel this morning, I felt. Your uncertainty and doubt was my uncertainty and doubt. I was literally where you are, but I promise you, if you find yourself outside your comfort zone this morning, you are where you're supposed to be. You're dreaming big, challenging yourself. Challenging yourself with goals that lie beyond your convenient expectations. And not only are your dreams big, but you've taken the first step towards realizing your goals. And what I offer you this morning is a philosophy for accomplishing your goals 
not for just the next four years, but for the remainder of your life. The secret to accomplishing your dreams depends on three things. Passion, planning, and persistence. Throughout my life, I have lived by these three principles. First, find something you're passionate about, and then plan for success, and most of all, be persistent. Don't be afraid to reach beyond your comfort zone when setting your goals. I would like to share an example of how this philosophy has affected my life beyond the days when I was sitting in the chairs you're sitting in this morning. A few years ago, I set a goal for myself, and I knew I was dreaming big because I was terrified of that goal. I became a distance runner late in life, but I made the decision to run a marathon, 26.2 miles, and I was passionate about my decision. Trust me, the day I registered for my first marathon in Savannah, Georgia, my comfort zone was nowhere in sight. But I did what you're doing this morning. I took the first step. I had found my passion, and I had a plan to achieve my goal. A schedule for how many miles I would run each day, when I would lift weights and run intervals. So I had my schedule, and I gave myself four months to train. But I promise you, every day of those four months, I was nervous. I was nervous when I got up in the morning and ran my practice miles. I was nervous when I went to bed at night with muscle cramps and sore knees. I was scared from the very first day I realized that the goal I had set for myself was beyond challenging but I remained persistent. I ran my practice miles many times at five o'clock in the morning because I wanted to be prepared. And when I got to Savannah, I knew every mile of the course I was to run. I knew which miles had a rise in elevation and which miles were downhill. I knew where every hydration stop was along the way. I left nothing to chance. I knew the weather forecast two weeks in advance of race day. So I found my passion, I planned for success, and I remained persistent throughout my training. It is a formula that works. It's a formula for success. The point is this, you can push yourself further in than you ever imagined possible, but you first must be willing to experience discomfort and overcome the anxiety that always comes with the unknown. It is through our willingness to experience discomfort that we achieve goals beyond anything we imagine for ourselves. So what I would like for you to do this morning, choose one goal, recognize your limitations, and then push those limitations to the next level. Where would that lead you? Where might you go should you push your expectations to new boundaries and then plan to go beyond those boundaries? You will be amazed by what you can accomplish if you don't settle for what's easy. So are you pushing yourself beyond your comfort zone this morning? Think about it. If your dreams don't scare you, you're not dreaming big enough. Don't join clubs to simply participate. Run for president. Don't try to simply survive the semester. Make the dean's list. Don't settle for what's easy. In hindsight, I remember every mile I ran in Savannah that day, and I have since run the Chicago Marathon the Marine Corps Marathon in Washington, D.C., and this November I plan to run my fourth marathon, the 50th anniversary of the New York City Marathon. Am I scared? Terrified. But that's how I know my dreams are big. 
So when I took the position as the Pike County Public Health Director, I was expecting to deal with issues such as obesity, smoking cessation, diabetes education. I thought I was dreaming big, but I had no idea. No one could have foreseen the pandemic that lay ahead. No one was prepared for what was coming. When the demands put upon me by the spread of this unforeseen virus seemed like too much, I immediately leaned on my formula for success. I was passionate about my new position, so I began to plan for how I was going to achieve my goals, which was to keep the people of Pike County informed and aware of what was happening so that they could best keep themselves safe. I made a plan with the help of many community leaders, with professional public health, and I remained persistent. I remain persistent to this day about slowing the spread of COVID-19. I refuse to admit defeat. Does it scare me? Yes, it does. It scares me for everyone in our community. But I'm working as hard as a person can work to accomplish my goals. That's what I want for you. Challenge yourselves. Push yourselves beyond what you think is possible. Be persistent and know that you are not alone. The faculty and the administration at the university are here to provide you with the tools you need to succeed. They are professionals and they have your best interest at heart. Good luck with the coming year and may God bless each of you during your college careers. I wish you all the success in the world. And as we said when I was a student here, go Bears! Thank you. We still say go Bears, Tammy. That's something that we do often. Um, I'm going to ask uh, if I could to have uh, James Riley, Tammy's husband, uh, escort her back to the podium. Would you do that for me, Dr. Riley? I think it was about four years ago uh, that we instituted a new award here at the University of Pikeville. And if, if the two of you could just stand up here, that's the reason I'm still wearing my mask, because I know we'll be a little closer. Uh, a few years ago, we instituted a new award that recognizes a family who has been an incredible family of service in this community for many, many decades. And just by talking about a family of that type, many of you in this room know I'm talking about the Baird family. Uh, Bill and Charles and their brother and their father and their sons and uncles and daughters have been a tremendous asset to this community for many, many years. And about three years ago, we said to ourselves, we need to recognize that. And so we created the Baird Family Service Award that we give when we find someone who is truly exceptional in the way that they serve the community of Pikeville, Pike County, and the region. And so today, we're going to present this award uh, to Mrs. Tammy Riley, uh, who continues to make a remarkable impact on the lives of others through her steadfast service both to the university and to the region and to all of humanity. Tammy, I can't think of anyone who I'd rather have on speed dial than you. Thank you so much for what you've done for this institution. Congratulations. Well, we're almost to the end, but our tradition is to close with prayer. So Sheena Shepherd, would you please come and close us in prayer today? Will you all please bow your heads? 
Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, this convocation, and this university. Go with us now and cover us with your protection as we start this school year. I pray for the health and safety of our students, faculty, and staff. May you bless us as we strive to be a light on the hill to our community and students. We give thanks to you always for all of your many blessings. Let us go forth now and serve you in the classroom, in campus life, and the surrounding community. And it's in your son's name I pray. Amen.